Brian. What's going on, folks? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I hope you all had a very good weekend. Of course, uh, a lot of interesting news. We had CrowdStrike. Of course, you had Biden stepping down. We can all talk about a little bit. Before we get too much into anything, I want to bring this all to your attention. Of course, we are doing our uh, July Tiger Dollar sale. Uh, we are going to extend that. You see here right now, it ends August 1st. The ads will reflect that. Um, there is no better time to do this. And the reason why we're extending this, because we don't really do this, is because we have so many, honestly, pretty cool things coming up for the rest of this month and then beginning it in August. First, of course, first and foremost, Basil's subscriber webinar tomorrow at Tuesday. That is from 4 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. Now, that is for all of his subscribers. So if you're listening to us right now and you're a subscriber and you want to get in there, it's very simple. I've put out some updates, uh, at least in the, the opening call newsletter itself of how to get in. I'm going to do another one by the end of the day today. Uh, you definitely want to get in there. If it is your first time subscribing to the opening call, like if you've, if you've never done it before, go ahead and do it. If for whatever reason the letter does not work for you, uh, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee, and that goes for all of our newsletters. And of course, when you're a subscriber to the opening call newsletter as well, you get access uh, just to a bunch of subscriber webinars that he has done in the past. Uh, again, there's no better time. Of course, we have Larry coming up the 26th on the live Friday. And then if you guys haven't seen, on the front page of TFNN.com, once you get your Tiger Dollars, hop over to the far right. We have Tom O'Brien, a live trading webinar straight from the man himself. Now, what is really cool about this, okay, is you get a one-month access to Market Insights with this and a signed copy of The Art of Timing the Trade. This is an award-winning book he has. It is fantastic. He's going over and trading the SPX, the Qs, the NDX, and then, of course, you have zero-day to expiration options as well, which are super cool. Uh, I'm personally looking forward to that just because uh, I think it's a very neat vehicle. So go ahead and check that out. Of course, how to start your trading day, best times of day to trade, how to enter and exit trades. And listen, you know, I know we have a lot of listeners here who are, you know, new to the market or trying to figure out how to, you know, tackle this beast. And if you are new, there is no better way to start trading than watch someone who's been trading uh, for decades. It is a great time. It is so invaluable. Um, so go ahead and check that out. Of course, you get uh, some massive savings. You get Tiger Dollars first and foremost, and then apply them uh, to the purchase. Of course, we have 20%, 30%, and 40% bonus tier uh, for those Tiger Dollars. Let's take a look at what we have going on right now. It's a little bit of rebound, and I think a lot of this might have to do with Biden stepping back. In the E-mini up about a percentage point, uh, SPY up about 1% as well. The Russell Future is still going up at 1.42%. The NQ is recovering, especially on the news uh, with NVIDIA. And, of course, Taiwan Semiconductor is pretty stellar. Um, report. You have the Dow futures, let's see, up about 0.31%, and same with the Dow Jones Industrial itself. You have the metals kind of just moving sideways, a little slightly lower. This is probably some profit taking after some decent movement up the past week, uh, but we are still not uh, done with that whole run yet. Again, I strongly recommend checking out Tim Ord and Tom O'Brien uh, when they're on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and of course, getting access to the Gold Report newsletter by Tom O'Brien. Uh, fantastic report today. Um, Again, if you're not subscribed, you should check it out for sure. Again, with that 30-day money-back guarantee, if you don't like it. Tesla up 4.92%, still dynamic sideways, kind of slightly down right now. Uh, the dollar, so, you, okay, well, yeah, the European Central Bank is not going to lower rates after they did. So, you know, no longer maintaining that divergence with the Fed. That can kind of move the dollar up a little bit as well, but we're still in that lower trading range. And you can see we really broke down um, below that 104 level. Now, we're testing it back up and bouncing off the 104 level, but this is still much lower in that trading range, and I do believe that a lot of people are still anticipating a September rate decrease. You have Meta up a bunch, Google up 2.57%, so the NQs are doing pretty well with all that. Apple up 0.33, Lucid recovering, and I believe, I believe, Rivian is also doing all right today as well. Yep, so bouncing off that 16 level, and uh, it'll be nice to see what goes on. We have a lot of we have a lot of earnings that came out. Of course, you have the uh, automobile earnings coming out as well. GM's going to do pretty well, ideally, on that. I believe Tesla's, don't quote me on this, I need to look it up. 
Uh, but I believe Tesla is coming out sometime this week, if not tomorrow, which is why the news of them putting out Tesla Optimus, which is their humanoid robot, is, uh, you know, gives me some pause because it tends to happen this way, right? Where maybe they don't have as good of earnings report or something negative is about to come out and he pads that uh, with some pretty sweet news. Uh, we can talk a little bit about that as well. Of course, uh, the number one news story is going to be Biden pulling back and endorsing Kamala Harris. Super interesting. I mean, this we, we've had, what, two major historical events occur in, in the past you know, week and a half, two weeks. Obviously, with the attempted assassination of uh, candidate Donald Trump and then Joe Biden stepping out as well. This is a pretty, I mean, it's a risky move, right? Um, we're so late in the game. I mean, this is the end of July. If everything cooking on in November, it'll be really interesting to see. But what I, I think is neat, and I, I talked to some of, uh, you know, the subscribers here, the clients here, and some people that I work with as well. It's like, what is the young person's perspective on all of this? And I, I think a lot of young people feel like whatever is going on in, in politics, at least on the presidential kind of level, uh, doesn't really reflect what matters to them in a major way. Or at least that's not how it's portrayed in the media. Um, and so I, I think these major fails in the sense that, you know, having to pull Biden out, which in reality is due to probably declining health or performance, at least in some capacity, and putting someone in randomly at the end. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Donald Trump running, who I, I know does have a lot of young people who support him, uh, but he's not the RNC's first pick. I think this is going to force the DNC and the RNC uh, to kind of take a different, you know, approach to providing uh, potential candidates and also who they decide to give the nominee uh, to. Um, so that is is really interesting in a major way. I, I think there's probably been, you know, a standard operating practice for quite a while, and I think that's going to go away uh, with all this. And, and we're, we're kind of seeing these last, I would say, you know, kind of contractions of this old way of doing things. So it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, what candidates we get you know, next election cycle after this one, uh, because I think we're going to see uh, some, some new approaches and new platforms as well, uh, which is kind of neat. Folks, uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're going to get into the markets this time and uh, kind of see what we have going on. Stay right there.